San Francisco 49ers making multiple roster moves on the first official day of the 2024 NFL League year. It's basically the third day of NFL free agency. You're watching the San Francisco 49ers report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. So the Niners, with the start of the new league year, making the release of Eric Armstead official. A lot of talk about that move incoming on Sunday night. We covered the story right here on the show, but they had to have Eric Armstead on the roster up until the official start of the new league year so that he could be a post-June 1 cut. And it's officially going to be a post-June 1 designation. It had to be for San Francisco. Otherwise, this move did not make any financial sense. And you look at what he's done over the last four years, the 21 games played in the last two, a little bit of a problem. And I think that's a reason why the Niners were moving on because that cap hit was just way too high. What this move means for San Francisco, they will save $18 million in cap space this year. He will count $10.3 million in dead money this year. And oh boy, Another $15.5 million in dead money on the team's 2025 salary cap. Another reason why the Niners wanted this to be a post-June 1 cut was so that they could spread that money over the next two years. So after nine years, the past four as a captain and Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year nominee, the Niners move on because that cap hit was checking in in the upper 20 millions. And with Armstead gone, this is pretty wild here, he is the last connection to the Trent Bulky era. And now the longest tenured Niner is Kyle Juszczyk, who the Niners signed early in the regime for Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. That deal happened in March of 2017, and then the other longest tenured Niner by just a couple of months after Kyle Juszczyk is George Kittle, who then joined the team officially in May of 2017 by way of the NFL draft. So that was the one domino that we were waiting to see happen. And it happened. And yesterday we talked about it on the show, how you had to have Armstead on the roster for the first day of the new league year so that he could be a post-June 1 designation. And while this move frees up $18 million in cap space, it cannot be used until July. So it can't be used in free agency. But that does fit the Niners' timeline for how they like to do business because they like to do contract extensions later in the summer. So this move, theoretically, could be allocated toward a Brandon IU contract extension, a Fred Warner contract extension, other players up for extensions, Charvarius Ward, Diamador Lenore, Talano Hufanga. Next move here, and this move happened before the start of the new league year, San Francisco restructuring the deal for fullback Kyle Juszczyk. That is a move that will clear up $1.75 million in salary cap space, and that money can be used in free agency. A lot of people like to talk down the impact of Kyle Juszczyk. And I voiced this here on the show. There was no way that Juszczyk could play in 2024 on the current construct of his deal prior to this restructure. The salary cap hit was too high. The base salary was too high for a fullback. But he is really important for what the Niners want to do both on the field offensively with the system and the scheme, but also culturally. And we're talking about a great player here who is an eight-time Pro Bowler in consecutive years from 2016 through 2023, a first-team All-Pro in 2023, unquestionably the best fullback in football and the only recognizable fullback in football. But... When he was set to have a cap hit of $7.5 million with a base salary of $5.7 million going into 2024, it's simply way too much money. And I know that when you look at his stats, they don't pop off the screen at you. We just showed you them. But 
Anytime the Niners call his name, call his number, he makes a big play. How about the toe drag swag catch that he made in the playoffs? How about the big catch and the extension for the first down in the Super Bowl? Lead blocker, motion man, downfield blocker. He does all of those things, and it doesn't always show up in the box score. This is why he subscribed to the show, because when the Niners make a move, we talk about it right here on the San Francisco 49ers Report. We've been live every single day during free agency, and that's a big reason why we are approaching 132,000 subscribers. We are a little bit more than 600 people away from that next milestone, so make sure you hit that sub button for daily coverage of the Bang Bang Niner Gang. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks, largest independently run daily fantasy sports app in North America and the only DFS app that you should be using. Get a $100 deposit match at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS to get that $100 deposit match. You put in $100, you get $100 back. You choose more or less. And here are our selections for this fine Wednesday evening full of sports. James Harden running a special right now is prize picks. More than 3.14 points. That's easy money right there. Jalen Suggs, more than 7.5 points. And then Jamal Murray, less than 21.5 points. You can win big money up to 25 times your money. And then you can just withdraw your winnings within the prize picks app. We'll put that link down below in the comment section as well as in the description of this video. And John Lynch has stayed busy here on day three of free agency. A move that I absolutely love is the trade for defensive tackle Malik Collins. A seventh round pick is going to Houston in exchange for a player who is a really good player. You look at his numbers in 2023, 41 tackles, five sacks, eight TFLs, and eight quarterback hits. He is pretty much helping to fill the void of the Niners losing Eric Armstead. And he is going to check in at about $10 million less than Eric Armstead. Let's compare what both of these players have done over the last three years. Armstead, 38 games played, 11 sacks, 28 quarterback hits, 148 pressures, 101 tackles, 13 TFLs. Collins has arguably been a better player. More available, 46 games, 11 sacks, the same. More quarterback hits by seven. Less pressures at 116, but more tackles, and he's doubled the amount of TFLs. And while you look at some of the PFF numbers from 2023, I think he's a better run stuffer than 45.6. Overall grade, not bad in the green, 62.7. Pass rush grade, really solid, 70.1. 45 pressures, 26 hurries. And the last two years, he has 85 pressures on the quarterback. So this is an impactful player. You give up a seventh-round pick for him. You help replace Eric Armstead, and he's $10 million cheaper than Eric Armstead. These are the types of financially savvy moves that some of the best front offices in the game make. And I think that the Niners are going to be able to reap the dividends of that on their roster. And then in the wee hours of the morning, 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 a.m. on the West Coast, San Francisco signed Eric Kendricks to a one-year deal. And he has eight straight years of more than 100 tackles. Still waiting to see what the money is, but I think it's going to be for the vet men. Seven TFLs with the Chargers last year. Three and a half sacks, six pass breakups, one forced fumble. Did not give up a touchdown in coverage. And this man has been a tackling machine. He's been very, very durable, very productive, and very well respected across the NFL. The Chargers let him go because it saved them a lot of money on the cap. He can blitz and sack the quarterback. He is going to be your Dre Greenlaw replacement and holdover option. And when you have that linebacking core now of Fred Warner, Eric Kendricks, Jalen Graham, D. Winters, that's your linebacking core going into 2024. And that's going to be a pretty solid linebacking core at that. And this is another move where you're not going to pay him all that much money. He's going to stay on the field. He's a dependable player and a very smart player. 
So San Francisco making all of these roster moves here today on this Wednesday as the official start of the new league year is officially underway. What's been your favorite signing so far? Let us know in the chat. Join the conversation as always. Don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching the 49ers Report. Appreciate you.